let's just start with like what are your thoughts on the mix and what is it that you like really want changed okay so this is the first time i've really done any mixing at all whatsoever i've always recorded or been the artist not behind the the computer so mm. I basically I took one of your templates and I ran with it and I've watched some tutorials from you and from some other people just to try to get me here. Okay. Um, and basically, like I feel like this mix, there's a lot I don't understand. I understand that everything needs headroom, and I think what I'm doing is in the mix I'm trying to make everything sound loud and bright and perfect, so that then when when it comes time to master on the bus track. Mm -hmm everything's way too hot already. So okay. it just, everything's coming to, when I listened to this, what I did, it sounds way too hot, way too sibilant. Mm -hmm. um, and my goal is trying to get the vocals to cut through the mix. Right. And I just feel like it, it's, it's just, I'm overdoing it. It's what I feel like. Okay. Let's listen to just this first part. Look at mix of 15, I did. I we ain't breaking down, we ain't hanging out. I bitch, trapping at my mama house, acting like I own it. Motherfucker, I was grown up. If I ain't got it on me, then I know where I could get it. Get it, get it, get it, get it. One phone call, homie, give me 30 minutes, minutes, minutes. We the reason. Oh, when I was coming up, everybody so dope. When I was coming up. Yeah, so like to me, the hooks sound really like thinned out. The verse, it's not as thinned out. It sounds a little bit more natural. As far as your recording setup, what did you have? Mic, preamp, interface, all that stuff. Uh, the interface I use is a Presonus 1818 VSL. Mm -hmm. um, the I built the this whole acoustic environment. Mm -hmm. um, the I'm using the newer Pro Tools, and the mic is probably the oldest piece of equipment I have. It's over 10 years old. It's a large diaphragm condenser audio technica at 2025 like it's not even you can't okay. even google it anymore <laughs> it's like, I, awful. I know i need to upgrade but and then do you record in that room that you're sitting in right now yeah there's okay. a i got a like a closed off area over here to the right with a, a monitor like linked in through the wall so i can control everything on my own oh nice so like when you're when you're mixing what's your volume at like on your computer or do you are you like halfway up are you like uh, cranked all the way up no like on my apollo twin it's usually 25 percent or less like i usually don't turn it up that much so okay. i mix pretty quiet and then i'll slowly turn it up at the end just to see what it sounds like when people want to listen to it loud but other than that, I mix at a pretty quiet level. Um, so I'm really interested to see how you, the stuff you did on the mix bus. Okay. Um, and it looks like I've heard you talk about the Shep 73, but I forgot what you said it was for. And I see you put it on the beat. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you the beat part fir first. Uh, I know you're using that free, the overtone plugin that I had in the template. Uh, that one's yeah. cool. But I just really like how this Shep 73 works. I like how it's set up and everything. So what I do is I switch it from stereo mode. I think that's the default stereo. I switch it over to MS mode. And then that just gives you the option to mix the center separate than the sides. So on here, I did a big boost on the side information and I left the center information at zero. So that's just the same. This has a plus 4.6 dB boost on just the sides. And then I do sometimes a little bit of EQ but it looks like I didn't really do much over here. So on the beat, on the volume control for the beat, that track itself, it shows a plus. Is that plus from the adjustment you made on there or? No, that's it's, right. Yeah, it's a separate volume adjustment. So this is just the size being brought up plus four or something. And then this is the overall beat being brought up plus four. I know you have a Got trim plugin on here. So I just left that as is. I had plenty of headroom to work with, so I was able to do a little bit of a boost as I was mixing to the beat. And then I'll go down to the mix bus, since that's what you're asking about. So I started with SSL compressor, very slow attack and a fast release, and it just glues everything together. I don't hit it very hard, so I'll press play so you can see how hard it's hitting. Boy. When I was coming up, everybody so dope. When I was coming up, everybody. Like that little thing barely moving on there. So. I'm yeah. not doing a whole lot of compression, but it sounds a lot better with it. I use bass room uh, on occasion on the mix bus, and I just thought it sounded good on this one. And all it is is just EQ for the low end. Less rumbly sound, but more of like a natural thick sound, I guess. Uh, it's hard to explain it, but it just sounded better. So um, yeah. And here's yeah. Uh, the difference between this one. Boy. When I was coming up, everybody so dope. 
when I was coming up Everybody so dope when I was coming up Everybody it just felt like it brought the right bass frequencies out so it's like more in your face sounding instead of just like yeah. a low rumble the whole time and then okay. i do the saturator x which i just love this uh mode right here the master plus 12 db mode just do a little bit of uh of a boost up Boy. when i was coming up everybody so dope when i was coming up everybody so dope when i was coming up everybody so so this not only adds a lot of level, but it gives it a nice like full sound. It just brings everything. It kind of like, it sounds like it compresses things a bit. So I like how that sounds. And I always make sure to not go over zero. If you're gonna go over zero, you wanna change your mode to like steel or iron over here. And that'll give you a nice like crunchy sound because it, those two, you could put the brick wall limiter in and you're not gonna actually clip the signal. But here, you'll actually start getting a nasty clip sound if you do it with these modes on top here. This is something I don't use a whole lot, but I did use it on this one because I just wanted to push things a little bit more and get a little bit more of that perceived brightness to it. And this inflator just sounds pretty good with giving that shine to things without making it too like push. Like instead of hitting it extremely hard with the limiter, I'll use this to just push things a little bit further. Uh, so here's before and after on this one. Boy. When I was coming up, Everybody so dope when I was coming up. Everybody so dope when I was coming up. So you can just hear that top end like lift up and it just sounds more forward. You don't always need this one, but sometimes it helps. These are the settings I ended up going with. When I was coming up. Everybody so dope when I was coming up. Everybody so dope when I was coming up. Okay, so I have the thresholds set separately so they're hitting everything as like I want them to hit so it's not completely smashing the bass like if it was a normal limiter then our bass and our mids and all that would all be at the same level so my bass would be getting squashed compared to like where my vocals are so that having that different um, option with that threshold being split like that just really helps. So that's okay to crank it if you need to on the input? Yeah, like whenever I'm cranking it on the input, I'm just watching this meter right here on the bottom to see the yeah. peak stops. And if I'm going like way up here, then I know it's going to end up being smashed by the time I get through with everything else. So I try to just like just start getting a little bit coming through here on the peak stop on the like heavy hits. And then I go through, do the rest of everything and then make sure it's not going overboard. And then the last thing uh, is the Pro L2. And I use this. I don't add any gain or anything like that. I'm simply using this to see my LUFS levels and to do my dithering and noise shaping. So that's all I use this for. Okay, that's another question I have too, actually. The dithering, like, so when I when I bounce a session to a wave in an MP3, like, I don't change anything and it plays on everything I need it to play on. Why do I dither down to CD quality if, like, I'm going to be posting on online and all that? Well, most everything you're going to post online is going to be in 16-bit format. And if you're recording in 32 or 24-bit and you're down yeah. going down to a lower bit rate at 16, that conversion is going to cause some issues. But it's like it cuts it off at a weird thing. So the noise that's added in there kind of smooths it out and it makes it to where you don't have any like weird sounds that happen in there. So. Okay. So And so how exactly do I dither? So on this, you just simply turn it on like it's either off or you put it at 16 bit it's whatever your source is going to be so i'm exporting at 16 bit uh which is wave files all of that you're going to want to be in 16 bit so um that's what i would do there if you were going to have like a high quality version uh at 24 bit and you already recorded at 24 bit then you don't need a dither so there's no reason to add dither if you're not coming down from a higher uh, bit depth. If I didn't have the L, what are other options to dither? Okay. And so you're also measuring, what do you call them, LUFs? LUFS, yeah. So that's the okay. loudness units and it just shows you what's like typical. On here, uh, you could select this minus nine, which is like a typical CD loudness. Um, a lot of songs do go a little over it though. It just depends on the songs and the artists. Like, for example, like Tech 9 
Everything that comes out from him is extremely loud. Like some of his stuff gets up to like minus six, but then a lot of other artists, like they're hovering around minus nine, minus eight. It just depends on where it's coming from, but usually you want to be around minus nine. You could also just use the stock uh, dither plugin and this is it. It's dither noise shaping. Uh, that's all you'd have to do. I forgot to mention in the Pro L2, I'm using, I'm doing peak limiting as well. So you'll see uh, true peak limiting is on right here. And okay. that's going to just protect you from going over the true peak, which is different than what the limiters show as the peak. That's something you want to make sure you do, especially with going on to these like Spotify and all that stuff. They have different recommendations for things, but you want to make sure you're not going over the true peak. On this one, the loudness meter plus, you have true peak limiter that you could turn on or off. Simply just turn it on there and you could set whatever you want. Ice cream, bring that ice boy. When I was coming up, everybody so dope. When I was coming up, everybody so dope. When I was coming up, everybody so air, everybody so, so you can see when it did hit that minus nine, it had a little check mark because I set it up to say I want to be around that. Like I usually bring this centerpiece down a little bit to give it more of that width and not so much focus on the center, but I still keep it in there so it sounds full. Uh, but a little before and after just so you can hear the effect. Here's before. A. And after. A. So it gives it a very wide sound. Um, I'd like to go over the vo vocals and then... And I'd also like to know, like, what tells you, like, when you're mixing, like, how do you know you're ready to go on to that mix bus? Like, when, you know, how do you know, like, all right, I'm ready to move down, you know, to start wrapping it up? Like, what, what are you uh, listening for or looking for? Once I'm just, like, happy with how the vocals are sounding, as long as there's nothing, like, bothering me as far as levels popping in or out or frequencies that stand out or just little things like that. Once I feel like I have a nice balance with the vocals and the beat and it sounds clean, then I'll go into the mix bus, I'll do that, and then I'll do the referencing, and if I have to, I'll go back into the mix and make tweaks. I'll solo out just this top part here. Moving bricks at 15. We ain't breaking down, we ain't hanging now. Trapping at my mama house, acting like I own it. On the track itself is just a de -esser, and I think this is one that you had there, so I just left that as is. And then... It's being sent out to verse sum, which is this one here. And this is where I do most of the processing and sending out to reverb and all of that because all of these vocals are being sent into this verse sum right here. The very first thing is X click because I noticed those clicks in there. I think this was your EQ, so I left that there. And then I went on to uh, the Poltec and did some changes here. The low frequencies have 100, at 100, Hertz, it's a 1 dB boost. The bandwidth is pretty wide, so it's pretty like open. And then at 10K, it has a 3 dB boost. And then at 5K, there was a little bit of an issue right there. So uh, a 1 dB attenuation at 5K. Right. Moving bricks at 15. We ain't breaking down, we ain't hanging now. Trapping at my mama house, acting like I own it. So it just brought it forward. It sounds a little bit brighter and it's just taking care of a little issue I was having at 5k there. So pretty light compression on this one. Sometimes I go a lot heavier with this compressor just because it's very like transparent, even if you hit it hard. So uh, I guess I just didn't need that much compression. I left your enhancer in here that you had on there. I took it off, put it back on, took it off, put it back on because there was a bunch of times where I just wasn't sure about it. But overall, I thought it sounded okay and just ended up sticking with it. And then uh, de -esser here just to take care of the sibilance. This one, I believe you had on there already, uh, and I just left that as well to get a thinner vocal. Moving bricks at 15. We ain't breaking down, we ain't hanging now. And then the reverb. So I'm just running it all through this hook verb here, which is seventh heaven. And went with the London plate on this one. Cut the lows, cut the highs, add a little bit of pre-delay, and it just sounded pretty good. So minus 16.6 .6 on how much is being sent into that reverb unit. We ain't breaking down, we ain't hanging now. Trapping at my mama house, acting like I own it. Something I did with the vocals creatively was, like you were saying, how you would repeat the words. I yeah. changed that, so it's now a delay unit with a automated feedback. So it's coming through at a certain level and then dropping off. Um, so the feedback automation is this top part right here. And then this is where I put the delays. 
it on me, then I know where I could get it. Get it, get it, get it, get it. One phone call, homie, give me 30 minutes. Minutes, 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 minutes. We the reason. So it just blends well in those gaps. On the vocal track itself, like, why are they grayed out like that? Did you, like, mute right that section? Yeah, that's just muted. So if I unmute it, it goes back. How do you do that? So uh, you, step, you control E to, like, separate that or command yeah. E, but. Yeah, command E to cut it and then command M to mute it. So as far as my vocals go, um, you didn't really change anything independently on any of the tracks. You applied all your changes to thicken it up on on the sums. Yeah, so pretty much okay. instead of doing it over and over on all of them, they're just all being sent into one aux and they're all getting the same plugins at the same time. I change my routing pretty often and whenever I find like a better way to do something, I'll start doing it and this is a way that I've recently incorporated into my mixing. The one plugin that's on all of them is the tuner. That's something I don't want just on the mix or on the vocal bus because that'd sound weird having a bunch of vocals sent in. So uh, I just kept it as you had it on the individual tracks. And then I like how you, you added a kick in the, the middle hook. Everybody's so dope. When I was coming. Like the vocals come in and then like the beat sounds like kind of stuttered without it. So I wanted to add in one. I tried two, so you can see there was a second one here I was messing with, but it just sounded better with the single kick added. Everybody's so dope when I was coming up. So it just gives that like build up kind of for the next part. Are you watching to see where you're where you're peaking at then? Like, do you stay below negative six or like um, before you go into the? Yeah, I mean, once I I set my like initial gain and levels and stuff. I kind of like don't pay attention to it unless I'm getting way too hot to where I, I run out of room. That's when I start paying attention again because I'm like, oh, I didn't give myself enough headroom. But let me see what we're coming in at on the mix bus before these plugins. So it's peaking at the highest at minus six. I just have a bunch of different songs that I like to use because I know these songs. I know how they sound. I, I like how they sound, but they're all a little bit different. So then I'll use those different types of mixes uh, against a mix I'm doing, and then I could balance it how I want to fit in between, or maybe sound like one of them more than another. I noticed in some of your tutorials, you said you always like go to mono to listen for phasing issues the once you think you're done. Sometimes. How do like, you do that? Yeah, uh, I'll show you how to do it. I don't do it all the time. I know I, I probably should, but um, it's not something I use every single time. Some people just, they mix in mono because they swear by it. Like, uh, Mixed by yeah. Ali, the Kendrick's mixer, he's mixing in mono a lot of the time. Uh, but it's just not something I like. I just, I prefer to mix in stereo. But uh, you could go down, if you have this plugin, it's the S1 Imager by Waves. And this makes it really easy to listen to mono because you just grab this width and bring it all the way down and now everything's in mono. Let's say if you crank that all the way up, does it actually increase the stereo yeah. field sound or does it just something you're listening to? No, it'll actually increase the width of the stereo field. So you could, uh -huh. if you need to have a wider, sometimes I'll use this on like pads or something that could sound a little bit wider. I could use yeah. these to spread them out a little bit more and get more width on it. Um, but if you overdo it, it just sounds really weird. I do wave and MP3 at the same time uh, 16 bit since that's what the dither was set at 16 bit sample rate the normal one for everything is 44.1 K for like CD quality stuff um, and then that's it just name it and bounce and then it's gonna pop up this one always do the highest quality mp3 because the lower quality ones sound terrible um, and that is all